when Lindsay was gone, I got to a place where it just had seemed so long in believing in promise after promise after promise after promise. And I, I'll, I'll tell you the truth. I'd, I'd gotten to a place where I'd, I didn't even want to read the story of, of Lazarus in the Bible. I just skipped it for months. Because I was thinking, God, if this thing dies, if, if this, all these things in me die, this hope that she's going to ever come back home again. She'd gone from relationship to relationship. It was just a nightmare. And I was thinking, God, if she doesn't come home, I just, if this thing dies, I don't know if I've got faith to see it resurrected. I don't know how to believe for this. I don't even, how many times did I say, I just don't even know how to believe anymore. In that season, I remember one day when it was coming toward, it looked like the final end where everything looked like it was going to be over pulled out my Bible, and I realized, for me, Lazarus is going to die. And I don't know what God's going to say to me in this, but I need to find it. And how to believe is when something's dead. How do you believe when hope is in a tomb? So I began to read, and I rem I've, I've got to the story that I've read how many times in my life. And as I was reading that day in such desperation for faith, I hit something that changed my life. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had already been in his grave for four days. Verse 20, when Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she ran out to meet him. But Mary stayed in the house. Now, I got to tell you something. Martha gets a little bit of a bad rap, you know, because, I mean, she was, she was a little bit busy and distracted. And how many of us relate to Martha? I do. I'm working on it. But in this situation, listen, Martha is a hero. I believe Martha, I believe Lazarus came out of that grave because of this girl. Now, Mary loved Jesus. She was a worshiper, and I love that. But when it came down to the hopelessness, Mary had stayed in the house. But something inside Martha is quivering. Now, I love Martha because I related to her. Because I'm telling you, when Lindsay, when it got into to December, after this two-year battle, I thought the battle of believing for my daughter was intense. When that battle turned between the battle between me and God, that was the hardest battle I've ever faced in my life. I remember days of dark despair like I'd never experienced when it looked like promises. I had stood, screamed, proclaimed, announced, told people, all of this. And now it looked like it was not going to happen at all. I remember, I remember the deepest, darkest day saying, God, God, this was in December of 15. I remember saying, God, if these promises do not come to pass, I don't know how to believe you for anything. I don't know if I've ever heard your word on anything in my life. If these promises do not come to pass, I don't know, I don't know if I've ever heard you on anything. I don't know how, I don't even know, I don't even know, I don't know anything anymore. The battle for faith. And to be honest with you, the battle was just not even being offended at him, the one you love the most. Where are you? Where are you? Don't you know Martha was feeling that those last few days before Lazarus was dead? Can't you imagine Martha in that house, the busy Martha, taking care of his bedding, taking care of all of his bedpans, taking care of him, getting everything he needed? Don't you know Martha had some questions when she was thinking, you know, you know, I, 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 we, we, we've been friends of Jesus for so long, and, 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 and I've sent word, I've sent, in fact, I heard Jake's preach something about this one time, nobody can tell it like him, but I'll do my own version here. He said, Martha was like, you know, I've cooked for him, and I've, I've been here, I've washed his clothes I've, I've, for Jesus, I've, I've taken care of him, I know he'll be here, I know he'll come, so listen, hey, listen, I need you to go get Jesus, because uh, Lazarus, I'm, he's getting worse instead of better, this ain't looking good at I know he'll come because he's always been here for us. And he stayed with us for days. He, he, I, I've taken care of him a lot. I've, I've loved him and he knows I love him. And he knows he loves Lazarus too. And he's his best friend. Can you go get him? Can you go find him quick? She's over here doing what she does. And Lazarus is not looking good. 
every day she's looking at me. Finally, here, you come, Gerard comes back. And he says, I found Jesus. And, and what, is he coming? Can he, can he get here quick? Well, he was just sort of over there. and mm, He was just hanging out with sort of the disciples. <laughs> just sort of waiting around there. <laughs> I know he's going to come. I know he'll be here. She keeps taking care of him until finally her hope breathes its last breath. God, what happened? I was there when he needed me, I thought. I thought I was there when he was wanting me and I needed him. Now they've come and put my brother in this tomb. He's been here four days. I don't know what to believe anymore. I don't know what to believe. She's hanging around that tomb. Everybody else has gone home. Somebody comes and says, he's coming. Who's coming? Jesus is coming. They told Mary. Mary was too grief stricken. She just didn't bother. But Martha. He's coming. He's late, but he's coming. <laughs> I don't understand it. I don't know where he's at. I'm heading, I'm heading down the road. Come on. When she sees him coming, a little bit of a broken heart and even a little bit of a fence. If you'd been here, if you'd just been here, he wouldn't have died. But two words. But even now. Even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Two little words, even now. Even now, he's dead and he's stinking and he's rotting in a grave. And it's more hopeless than it's ever been. But even now, even now, everybody else is going home. But even now, God will give you whatever you ask. She didn't know what he would say. She didn't know if he'd just say, well, Martha, let's just come with me. I want to comfort you in your sorrow. You're going to have to accept this. She just looked for his word. When Jesus heard those two words, can you imagine what happened? He couldn't resist himself. Immediately he responded. He exploded. When she said, even now, God will give you whatever you ask. He looked at her and he said, your brother will rise again. Oh, yes. Because when God hears faith, he cannot resist. He explodes on the scene. Your brother will rise again. I love Martha because her faith wasn't perfect. I need people like this. She didn't just explode and say, let's go. She said, oh, I know he'll rise. On the last day, that whole religious thinking sort of kicked in, you know. And Jesus didn't. Let that destroy the faith that he'd already heard. He said, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Let's go to the grave. They walked to that tomb. And I love what Jesus says. Roll away the stone. And sweet little Martha, once again her faith wobbles. Lord, He's been dead four days and he's stinking now. <laughs> and even that didn't keep her miracle from coming. Come on. He had already heard and even now. He had already heard just a little bit of, it don't take a lot of faith. It just takes two little words. Just give me a, a little grain of mustard seed. Just a little bit of faith. I don't need much. I don't need perfect. I just need a little bit. Lord, Lord, now, it's been four days and he's stinking now. I love what Jesus said. He gave, he gave her a little kind rebuke. Ch check it out. He goes, Martha, didn't I tell you, you would see the glory of God if you would believe? And then he tells him, Lazarus! Where'd that come from? Two words even now. Lazarus! I know you're dead. I know it's completely hopeless. But come forth. 
Can you imagine Martha standing there with her little bitty even now faith trembling all over her? When that stone is rolled away, she sees the silhouette of her hope walking toward her. Her faith became sight. Her faith became sight. My God, my God. Oh, it's him. It's the one I love. It's him. almost done and I'd let you keep standing but give me two minutes turn that stone around I came to tell somebody right now I made up my mind when Lindsay was gone I made up my mind I made up my mind come here I made up my mind my daughter's marriage my daughter it looks like her life spiritually He's in that tomb. And it's as hopeless as it's ever been. I don't know if there's any, if there's any in the natural. It looks so, dis, it looks so desperate. And my decision is, when I got that word, I decided one thing. All right? It's hopeless. But if I takes it, I'm going to pack my bags. And everybody else I know has already left Karen and said, it's over and you need to accept things like they are. Karen, it's been years now. You and your little promises, you've been telling everybody, I made up my mind. I'm going to sit right here. I'm going to camp out on a tomb. I got my suitcases. I got my lunch. I'm going to scribble it right here. Even now. Even now. I got my eyes on the road. I don't know when he's coming. I don't know how he's going to do it. But he's going to do it. I know he's coming. I know he's coming. Get up on your feet all over this room.